Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness, baby. Heavy Kyle Walker. Here. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling good, man. How are you? I'm blessed, black, and highly favored, man. Okay. How was your uh, weekend, your week? Oh, it was good. We were down in uh, Washington, D.C., man. Got to do uh, the DAR uh, Constitutional Hall. Wow. Which is where Eddie Murphy films Delirious. Wow. And that's the first piece of stand-up I ever heard in my life. Wow. I heard a cassette tape of it. I was with my dad. He played it, and he... I mean, my dad was crying, laughing at the Ralph Crandon. Crandon was gay. Was that the red leather team. outfit? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So he filmed it there, and we did two shows there. And I didn't even realize that was the venue until we were there. And then I, it was like, it was a surreal moment. Obviously, this is like that singular time listening to stand-up changed the rest of my life. And now I'm, you know, doing two shows at the venue. How many gay jokes did you do in honor of Eddie Murphy? As many as I possibly could. You got to let it rip, man. Oh, you got to let it rip, man. Oh, come on. I was trying to explain to somebody earlier. I don't know if it was delirious or raw, but both of them, because one of them he got in trouble for, or the equivalent of trouble back then. Yeah. And then he came back on the next special and made fun of getting in trouble. He got in trouble because he was clowning the LGBTQ community. Yeah. And I was explaining it to somebody who's much younger than me. And I was like, that was back in the day when, like, you let the slur fly. And he goes, his eyes got big, and he goes, the F? <laughs> 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 and I go, yes. Yes, yo, yes young whippersnapper, yo, the F. <laughs> it was the beginning of that special is crazy. I played it for my wife. I was like, yo, this is the reason I do comedy. I was like, this changed my life. This made me the comedian I am today. And I put it on, and the first few minutes, I was like, there's a lot of out there, ain't there a lot of <laughs> out there? We gotta watch out for these <laughs> look at your ass, your ass gets hot. <laughs> my wife is looking at, wait, wait, this is what? I was like, no, no, I get to the end, the goony goo goo. But the, the, funny the, part about, the funny part about it is when you watch it now, it's not the most complex comedy, but for the 80s, it was just funny. Nah, like, bro, the storytelling is so oh, complex fantastic. and beautiful. Nah, and the character work is amazing and fantastic. the punchline. I mean, he was... Fantastic. My favorite one is... I, I can't remember. I don't know if it's Delirious or Raw, but when he... Half. Ha Eddie. No, no, Eddie. no. No, I like the one where he's talking about how everybody was mad about him. And all the LGBTQ community was mad about him. Yeah. So he was like, you know, I'm walking down the street and I hear... I'm thinking it's police sirens, but no, it's the F words on top of their car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, it was funny, man. It was funny. Nah, he had so many, bro. My dad never let me watch the whole thing. He let me watch it. He he, he let me watch one joke, and it was a joke Eddie said he had for kids. Which one? The rabbit in oh, the woods. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he said the bear met the rabbit in the woods. And the bear said to the rabbit, do you have problems with shit sticking to your fur? <laughs> I was like, no, I have no problems with shit sticking to my fur. So the bear grabbed the rabbit and wiped his ass with the rabbit. Why was that so funny back then? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even think that was Eddie Murphy. I think your dad just told you that joke. No, I saw that. <laughs> I think you just confused. You never saw that? I, I promise didn't. you, it's the big, put, look it up, Eddie Murphy bear rabbit joke. Nah, man. And if, you play, and if it's up... We got to play it, and if there's any gay slurs in there, we got to let the gay slur go because you, this is history. Delirious? It's either raw delirious is one of them. We can't take down our, our statues, you know what I mean? I ain't said nothing about gay. She said Eddie Murphy gay. Eddie what? Murphy said, rabbit uh, bear. Bear. Nah. Now, right. play, you got it now. Y'all don't remember What's this special? joke? I it's the uh, delirious. Yeah. What part of it is it? Like, what's well, the concept? It's a joke for kids. My dad let me see this. Like... By the way, so many comedians have done this joke, and I'm trying to figure out why would you do this joke knowing Eddie Murphy did it in fucking one of the most famous stand-ups ever. Because I think he sees a kid in the audience or something. Mm. Do we hear it? Yeah. The bear turns to the rabbit and says, excuse me, do you have problems with shit sticking to your fur? And the rabbit says no. So the bear wiped his ass with the rabbit. <laughs> why was that so funny? <laughs> Eddie, who was just the biggest rock star in the world. Yeah, that shit. Because that shouldn't have got the last Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, he must have been talking to a child. He was. It was he a was, kid yeah. in the audience. That's oh, what I remember. Then he, it's funny. Yeah, it was a kid in the audience. And he was like, no, he said, is that Gary Coleman? Oh, or, 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 it was some, But it was a kid. Mm -hmm. And then he goes, that's when he did the whole thing about I have a, I have a joke for kids. You can use this one. Mm -hmm. That's what my dad let me watch. I'll never forget okay, that. Okay, then it's funny. I mean, yeah. telling a dirty joke to a kid is always funny. Yeah. Yeah, see, here's the thing, right? We're <laughs> <laughs> not going to have you hate on Eddie. No, 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 no,
like you know how you be trying to explain things to a new generation if they didn't live it or didn't experience it that's on them this shit is for us yeah like like they they might not get into that cuz it's a, it's a it's like listening to like 80s hip hop now that is true with you comedy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that is true with art in general. Like sometimes art becomes antiquated. And now if you keep on creating art, like you will change with the times, you'll be inspired by the times. But but that does happen. Because because we got memories attached to this. Like oh. you you you, t- you got a whole story about your dad and you know what I mean? Exactly where I was sitting. That's that's exactly. My, that's yeah. right. Like I know where I was when my dad said, Hey, come here, man. I want you to watch this joke. Don't tell your mama. You know what I mean? Like, so you you it's different. Like I can't. Alex will watch that and be like, eh. you know what I mean? But to yeah. me, it's hilarious still. Yeah. And it's even more hilarious now simply because he's saying a whole bunch of shit that wasn't appropriate then, yep. <laughs> but it's really not appropriate now. Yeah. You know? But I like yeah. to play it to let y'all know why we so fucked up. Now we are fucked up. You know? <laughs> but I'm glad before, yeah. No, no, it was good. It was good. We, we came up in a great era. Bro, I had a I had some shit happen in a DC show. I don't even know if I could share the clip because this is so unbelievable. Like, it will feel like it's set up. Oh, I, I heard about this. You did hear about it. A transgender in the front row? Yeah. Who told you this? Uh, discreets. The people, they always hit me. Like, people will just hit me like, yo, your boy? <laughs> Son, <laughs> your boy is a wild boy. Son, I'm, I'm, asking, I'm asking the women in the audience, right? I go, I, I, I just look for a woman and I go, how many eggs do women produce a month? Okay? And I ask her, she's sitting in the front row. Hold on, out of all the women in the audience. She's sitting in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and she goes, I don't know, I'm trans. And I'm like, what? She does not look trans. You know how some women look trans? Really? Not look trans at all. Really? The dude sitting next to her is so square looking. It's like Chris is a cooler version of him. Damn, Chris. Chris is a cool dude. Yo, God you, damn. Why you say that <laughs> laughing? <Jesus Christ>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying Chris is, you know, but you yeah, know. Yeah, I, mean. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris is an intellectual. He's a writer. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he's supposed to look like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Journalist. He's a producer. You know what I mean? Not fucking Yo, bitches Chris, and no leader. Shit, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I get exactly what you're saying. Chris okay. pops up on Zooms and I'm like, God damn, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please just, you just use audio. <laughs> <laughs> but he gives a certain validation. Of course, you know it's going to get done. That's right. That's right. The book's delivered in six months. Okay? If Chris shows up, the book's delivered. Anyway, this trans was looking very born woman. Mm. Oh my God! To the point where I thought she was with the dude to her right. Like, did she look like you might say to her, "Have you ever been? Have you ever swallowed something up?" Well, I knew definitely she has. Damn. Yeah, like I, it, I mean, I was, son, it was. Impressive, I was, impressive. Yes. What race? It had to be Asian because they are the best at it. Damn. Mm. The dude, I thought she was with the dude next to her because he was a little more swagged out. She wasn't. She was with the Chris. And I asked the dude. Oh, his I was, name was Chris for real? No, his name was Greg. <laughs> oh, he was trans Chris. Is, 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 exactly. <laughs> yes. And I asked, and I'm like, yo, I'm like, Greg, do you know, or are you just finding this out like right now? This was their first date. And he goes, he goes, I know. And I go, he, he like what he like. Oh, he I loves it. I would have been. Um, <laughs> say <laughs> 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 She's trying. <laughs> Damn, Greg. Why am I mad at you? Anyway, they were, it was you just like. You like what you like, man. Hey, no, no. It was, it was, it was unbelievable. Just comedy gods, though. See, you can't. Every even- once in a while it happens. But I'm literally on stage, like, I'm like, no one would even believe that the, they're going to think that I set this up because it's so absurd that the first girl I ask goes, no, I'm trans. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You got it on video? Yeah. You got to put it out. That's inclusive. Yo, I did think it was fire that she was like up there front row. And also another thing that I didn't do it in the moment. Why wouldn't like, she be? You're not Dave Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't she be? Yo, the thing that I fuck with is that, is that like afterwards I didn't coddle her. Like, you know, some people do it like, well, it's so you're so brave for being here. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And all this. No, no, no. You're going to get these jokes like everybody else gets these jokes. Like this is what's going to happen. So you started hitting her. Bruh. 
like she was a man. <laughs> you know, you know, but she wasn't, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but she had to get it. And Greg was getting them too. Greg was going to get clubbed then and later. Greg going <laughs> to give a fuck. Greg, Greg is front row with his oh, trans woman minding oh. his business. He, he, there's not a joke you could tell him he could care about. Oh, Greg. He going to go home later. He getting swallowed up. He, he, he good. <laughs> he don't care. I think they both swallowed. Because Shorty told me she still got the meat attached. Oh, y'all had a whole convo. You this might have went on that. for this might have been on for 15 minutes. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't a one-off thing. It it literally diverted the show for 15 minutes. No. It was unbelievable. It kept getting crazier and crazier. Do you think it's because you were in your head like nobody's gonna believe this? I kept saying it out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. is not believable. And then Greg just kept on. Damn. He kept on keeping on, bro. Damn, Greg. Yo, Greg kept on keeping on. What was her name? Riley. No, man. Riley and Greg. <laughs> Riley and Greg. Yeah, well, that's what? a good name because I go both ways. It, it is. Does. Greg Riley, Riley Greg. Yeah. Okay, Riley. Well, salute to Riley, man. Yeah, shout out Riley. But shout out Greg, also the throat king. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Throat King, right? Come on, Greg. I'm not mad at Greg, man. Greg is a G. Because if really, if you pop up like that, you ain't tripping, Greg. Like, I don't care Yo, what y'all think. I'm front happy. Row. I'm, he's happy. He likes some trans. I thought that she looked too she to be like, I was like, are you into her? No, not in like a bad, like, if you're into trans, you like a little bit more. There's a little bit more masculine aesthetic because it started a that more, way. A little more handsomeness. There's a little more handsomeness. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But Shorty yeah. wasn't that. She Shorty wasn't looked like a all. girl. So I'm like, is she letting you down a little bit? Because you want some so, jaw. That is so nah, I don't you think. She, I don't, nah, she still got the meat. Yeah, I don't think they want that. What the meat? It's like they didn't have a choice. Did it's she have just breasts? getting better. Yeah, I think she had breasts. Shout out to Greg, man. Yo, she bought the tickets to the show, and I was like, yo, you got to cut that out, yo. What? You told her to do what? I'm saying if you want to be a woman, you got to commit, bro. You can't. You know what I mean? Like, yo, are you trying to be a woman or not? Yo? Is it Uchi Wally Wally or is it one mic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God>. Anyway. <laughs> uh, what we got, Taylor? All memes necessary. Oh, man. The goat strikes again. Oh, let I me think see this it. is old, though, because I feel like I saw this before. But it, re it resurfaced on social media for some weak reason this weekend, man. Let me see it. I love it. Oh, you got to start from the beginning. It's the goat. goat. Their way into acceptance. I need you to understand me. I need you to understand me. Dr. Umar on Instagram Live. I need live. you to uh, shake that booty. I'm blocking you, brother. We don't do that here. <laughs> we don't do that. I'm sorry, my brother. This is not a rainbow gang. <laughs> This is not a rainbow thing. This is not a rainbow gang. This is not a rainbow bang, my brother. I don't want no men on my feet telling men to shake their backside. We not doing no tutti fruity here. I'm sorry, my brother. Whatever you into, you go do that. You go do you, my brother. You can indulge in all the European lifestyle activities you want. Yo, why you not that on us, my man? Life and promote Yo, anything like we invented gay? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, definitely. I'm sorry, but I'm the son of the sun, and I just got to tell the truth. Like I was saying. Is there anybody that's more authentically themselves than Dr. Umar? Oh, that's beautiful. Is there anybody? All of y'all be talking beautiful. about standing on business. Who stands on business more than Dr. Umar? Also, Johnson? he got the best, like, hands, whatever that is. <laughs> what is this called? Birdman. He got the best Birdman in the business. I think it might be better than Birdman. What is this called? Rubbing your hands? <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. He got idea. the best hand rub in the business. <laughs> He's trying to rub the white off the palms. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to Dr. get some Umar melanin into the no palms, white. bro. That's Dr. Facts. Umar's trying to rub the white off Can we run off that back? Palms, I mean, man. we got to run that back, bro. <laughs> you need it one more time. Well, look at this hand rub, bro. The hand rub is unmatched. Watch this. <laughs> Think they can consume their way into acceptance. I need you to understand me. Mm. I need you to Shake that booty. I'm blocking you, brother. We don't do that here. <laughs> we don't do that. I'm sorry, my brother. This is not a rainbow thing. This is not a rainbow thing. This is not a rainbow gang. This is not a rainbow bang, my brother. I don't want no men on my feet telling men to shake their backside. We not doing no tutti fruity here. I'm sorry, my brother. Whatever you into, you go do that. You go do you, my brother. You can indulge in all the, the European lifestyle activities. So what's you the want. deal? How is the school? Like what's when can we see him live? School like, is open. I mean, it's not open, but it's there. Everybody keeps fronting like the school isn't there. It's there. I didn't say it's not there. He's I, got I'm not 
He's got uh, signage outside of it. I, I guess, I don't know. I guess he's just waiting to be accredited or whatever. I mean, does he have students and teachers? Because that's what makes it a school. Well, you got to be accredited first, right? What comes first? No. Kanye yeah. shit wasn't accredited. Remember Kanye had some goofy school on the West Coast? Yeah, I remember I don't the think that was accredited. I, 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 I mean, you could teach homeschool. That's not accredited. Did you see Kanye get ran up on? By whom? It was a homeless guy, bro. I seen Kanye. I don't know why wife. Kanye walking around with no security. That's the crazy part about all of this. I should set up. I don't believe nothing with Kanye. Nah, this one was real. This guy was too. This guy was too committed. Like too, too committed. And you can tell by the way he skedaddled. Like Kanye gonna skedaddle in his car. He's so smart, so new, so nifty. You ain't boy. Don't at least I'll play my card too. I'm a boy. I didn't die. Damn. Why he got in before his wife? He's a fart, homie. He's like a boy. They say he's homeless, but he's dressed just like Kanye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. He looks like that guy from um, Hunger Games. Smart guy. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, Jeffrey Wright. I, I think, but that's exactly what he looks like. The crazy part about this is he can't. Right. Right. No, he's an actor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Actor, yeah. Right. I ain't most deaf, dog. I ain't born, boy. He clearly got a smartphone too. Yo, man, don't believe none of this shit. He's up on all the Hunger stories. I just think he's upset. Not his graduation. Only no boys. The mom's doing my son. He's okay, he's... Kanye thought about getting out and hugging him. No, he thought again. And that's right. He's yeah, like, no. I'm not fucking Wait. with this guy. Hold on. Look at the milk, though. Like, with all due respect, the milk is crazy. What, Kanye's titties? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. What? God damn. That's your type, for real? What do you mean? that The hottest girl? What's up, bro? Like, with the girl in the front row at your show turns you on? What's going on? What you mean? What are you talking about right now? <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm talking about the milk. Kanye's titties? Stop it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're acting you acting crazy, bro. you acting crazy. What are you bro. talking about? This guy's acting crazy right now. What are you now. talking why about? You, why are you doing that? Yeah. Yo, what I, else is in this video? Other than there's a girl right there with huge, floppy, bouncing tits, and they were obviously bro, that is referencing Kanye. that. Man, <laughs> this man, guy stop. Is crazy. Man, you're being disrespectful, this bro. Guy is crazy. You're really being disrespectful. Kanye's going to get in his great. feelings and invite you to his house again. <laughs> Yo, goodness fucking shit. Gracious. Who's that, his wife? God. Yeah, those things are crazy. Like, the with all due respect. Don't lust don't over another man's wife. Don't give a fuck about asses at all. Say again? What? <laughs> you don't care about asses. Kanye posted that? Yeah. yeah he, he that's posted the thing. all. You so this is the thing. This is why I don't care about talking about it, because he's posting his wife in an objectifying manner. So if you post your wife in an objectifying manner, you want us to objectify her. Look how he's posting her. Well... Yeah. I don't talk about wives. No, no, no. I, I get but if you're yeah. using your wife as a model, yeah. and you're posting her ass on Instagram, and That's her titties her all over there, yeah. cheeks are going crazy. That's is that her, her tongue? I would look at that. That is wild if you post that about your wife, and then you get mad if people you leave. You can't. You can't. What about Holy. if it's people you know, though? But that's fucking crazy. What about if, what if it's people you know? If it's people you know commenting about your wife's cheeks or her breasts or something? I mean, at a certain point, if you have eyeballs, then there's, you know, they knew already, <laughs> right? Like, they knew it before. Did you know that those things were sitting on her long. chest? Can I ask, I want to ask this question. Yeah, ask a question. How did her fucking chest get so fat and big? Why? <laughs> ask that question. If you're, if you're, that if, doesn't even make sense scientifically. If you're a husband, <laughs> what is the point of this? Yeah, what's the point? I, I'm with you. No, this is wrong. As a husband, I'm saying I would never do this. But I'm as, saying, a husband. as a husband, what is the point of this? Like... Why? He's trying to show that his wife is more hotter than Kim. That's what it looks like he's trying to show. Huh? How y'all get I that? I feel like he keeps trying to one-up Kim. Like, every girl he's had after her looks like her. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> a wise man that I know, comedian, um, used to have a joke in his arsenal where he would call that a tribute. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. A young it ain't Hezekiah. cheating, yo. If if you <laughs> if you hook up with a girl that looks just like your wife, that is not cheating. <laughs> what is it's a well, tribute. It's a tribute. That's what young Hezekiah Walker used to say. That's a fact. <laughs> okay. You gonna get mad at your husband for fucking a girl that looked just like you? He had to it's search the whole me. world. It's not me. That's the whole point. He had point. to search the whole world to find another well, you. Why would you? Yeah. If he gonna cheat, why don't he just cheat with some other random Absolutely. bitch? He misses you. I told y'all before the only thing. <laughs> or he just has a type. The only no. The only way Kanye would that... discredit us. The only way Kanye <laughs> could remotely make Kim jealous is if he was with a black woman. Yeah. That's it. 
Nah. That's it. You got to go get what she's been emulating. Yeah. You don't Ooh, go. Ooh, I didn't think about it like that. Yeah, you don't go mm -hmm. get somebody that's emulating her. You go get what Kim has been emulating. You go get you a sister Yo. with the real hips and the ass and the get, breast get and all of that. You know what Are I mean? Are there girls that have real everything anymore? Nowadays, oh, that one kind of looked. Those, I mean, what do you think? Those those breasts are augmented by something, <laughs> right? I mean, I'm not talk about that man's wife, even if he does objectify her and post him on social I'm media. Not, we're not talking about it. We're not talking about it in terms of anything that. You see what Alex did to me just now? What, what? he said, look He's at your telling tits. me to watch my mic, but he goes, he looks yeah, at me. Yeah, goes, yeah. Look at those tits. Hey, look, yeah. That's so <laughs> crazy. Did. Why are you keep did. putting that on? That I said, weird. watch your mic. I, I didn't know what you were saying. That shit made me feel uncomfortable <laughs> when you did it. That, that shit did make me feel like, uncomfortable. You, why would I don't you got do those milkers. It looked like you just had your tongue out. I'm just, he's like, yo, whose tongue is that in the top left? Whose tongue is that? But whose tongue is it? Is what I'm trying to figure out. Whose music video? I saw Kanye say that he's putting out his new album in parts. It's going to be Vulture Part 1, Vulture Part 2, Vulture Part 3. I don't we care. No, no. I mean, it, just, it depends who's in the music video. <sighs> Is there going to be a milk sighting in the music video? <laughs> I think that's really what it comes down to. I think the thing about Kanye and his music is like, Okay. We're always going to be here for it because of how great it was. I don't care. But anymore. what is he going to be telling us now? I genuinely don't care. I, yeah, I don't. Eh, I don't really. I'm gonna listen. You know what I mean? But I'm like, I'm not anticipating. Nah, that. he needs to rely on the milk. If the milk is not there, nobody <laughs> gives. <but> he does. <laughs> he's, he's at a point right now where it's milk or nothing. <laughs> Look at all the posts. The posts that are getting, you know, likes and right. getting shared. No, it's milk or right. nothing. You kind of right. You're he's in right. a milk or nothing phase of his career. He are needs milk. Are y'all saying that because? of what he's been doing, like with the Jews and everything. Taylor, you're trying to ask a serious question when both of us are, are absolutely... Could you stop, Taylor? Yeah, I mean, God like, damn. Why are you talking about Jews I'm when we're trying to talk you, about milk? No, because I'm asking, why do y'all feel the way about... If Kanye wasn't doing that, would y'all feel the same way about his music? Yes. Yeah. Because what is, it sucks. Yeah, what's the last great project he put out? I mean, for me, the last complete great project was The Life of Pablo. Oh, beautiful album. Amazing Unbelievable. Album. I think Life of like, Pablo was a classic. Um, One of the greatest albums of all time. The Kid See Ghost album with Cuddy was pretty decent. You know what I mean? It was cool. No, I didn't listen to it. Uh, other than that, I mean, there's a couple songs on um, on the one where he was in Montana. Yeah. Someday. That was yay. Someday. Yeah, yeah. I, fuck I, know, I think that's Kid See Ghost. That's the one with him and Cuddy. No, I think. No, I don't think. No, I think Cuddy that was the, the hook, Montana right? joint. Yeah, they, they did all that in Montana. Remember, they, they put out like Mad albums. They put out oh. Tiana's album. They put out Nas's album. Yeah. Did Nas no justice? Oh, thank Sad. God for Hit Boy. For coming back, and, uh, who else they put out around that time? They put out a bunch of projects. The Kid See Ghost Project. They just kept putting out like seven song projects from Montana. Pusha T. I think they dropped Pusha T's album. I don't know if Pusha T was Montana. I think Pusha T was before Montana. Yeah. All I'm saying is like you know, Kanye hasn't excited me musically in a minute. I keep saying it over and over, man. The best, the best we could get right now is a Drake album, executive produced by Kanye. And a Kanye album executive produced by Drake. Because they, they, you know, at one point, Kanye was definitely a muse for Drake and definitely an inspiration for Drake. And Drake has definitely been Kanye's muse since he got in the game. <laughs> like, yeah. like, since he got in the fucking game. So let Drake write the raps. Ye produce the beats. And, and and vice versa. No, not vice versa, because I don't want Kanye write, writing shit for Drake, because he can't. But Ye producing beats... Yeah. For Drake. Boom. Now we got something. Mm. Okay. Now, who's who will produce the milk? <laughs> what where will we go to get that? Where will we where will we go to get the lactate? Montana's a great place for milk, by the way. You're actually right, because there's dairy factories That's all right. over the place. That's right. Beef everywhere That's you go. Right. You know that for a fact. <laughs> I'm feeling very lactose tolerant at the moment. <laughs> Did you know that? Hey Taylor, did you know that? Man, you also. <laughs> but why is Taylor so jealous of fat, huge tits? What is their whole deal? White. She's only jealous of fat, huge. That girl white ain't white. Ones. What is she? Whoa, that girl's black. Stop, <laughs> yo, stop. For Tell real. me that girl ain't black. Who? What makes her black? Let us know what what it is. How beautiful she is. Oh, what you gonna do with that one? <laughs> Fucking gotcha. <laughs> Fucking gotcha. That's really good. <laughs> Take that in your pipe and smoke it or something. Damn, that okay? was racist. 
Wait a minute. Let me think about it. <laughs> let me think about it. Let me think. Depends what Put that it is. In your pipe is smoking. Yeah, it depends what's in the pipe. If it's, meth, it's not racist. If it's crack, <laughs> it's getting dicey. It's getting dicey. You know what I wanted to ask you about? Okay, Matt Gates, right? Matt Gates made a statement. Do you have that up there, Taylor? Okay. Pull up Matt Gates' statement, right? Because I had I had a, 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 a not a take, but I was just like, just. Have, did you hear what you know what I'm going with this? No. Pull up Matt Gates, Taylor. What is he talking about? I always remember we're a podcast and we're in live in real time. Put Matt Gates, Karen's. Okay? There you go. Karen? Yeah, Karen. Put Matt Gates, Karen. I mean, Jesus I mean, Christ, it's... Taylor. You can't spell How Karen. How do you spell the Karen? You really yeah. hate white women. Yo. That is crazy. Yo. That is... <laughs> go look for it. You don't even know how she first spelled it out. I didn't visit. K A R R I N. Go to the news. Like go that. to the news mask clip. I don't want to go through a whole news report. <laughs> Yo, uh, she, 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 she's she trying to pull up super real clear <laughs> Click real clear politics right there, right there, right there. You think Matt Gates right. is talking about black? Press Karens? play. And what I could tell you is like, for every Karen we lose, there's a there's a Julio and a Jamal ready uh -huh. to sign up for the MAGA movement, and that abodes well for our ability to be more diverse. So, so okay, so what he's saying dope. is they're losing a lot of white women, but for every white woman they lose, there's a Spanish man or black man. Mm -hmm. That's why he said Julio for Spanish, Jamal for black man, ready to sign up for the MAGA movement. What are your thoughts when you hear that? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Yeah. I, I believe that that is happening. I think there'll probably be record. Well, I think also the the Hispanic community is, is always, especially if you like talking about like Cubans, have always been historically conservative. The, anything that reminds them of socialism or communism, they reject. So immediately they're like, hey, these liberals are getting too close to socialism or communism. Socialism and communism killed their family members, took all their wealth and really fucked them out of an existence in Cuba. So they're like, nah, we're not doing that shit. We're riding with Republicans. So they always do that. But I also think you see that with like Mexicans, El Salvadoran and Venezuelans. Dude, every immigrant that comes to America that's not white most likely comes from a way more conservative country. Mm -hmm. The only reason that they vote democratically, not the only reason, but one of the, the major reasons they vote democratically is because the conservative party has been positioned as racist or labeled as racist, painted as racist. They're like, well, I can't vote for those racist guys. I got to go with these guys, even though all the values that I have from the country that I came from mm -hmm. line up with the conservative ones. Your reaction to that clip was my reaction. I was just like, well, I mean, I'm not going to overstate it, but I mean, clearly you can look and see that, you know, there's a lot of Spanish men and a lot of black men, you know, that may be gravitating towards the Republican Party and they're clearly losing white women. But soon as I said that, they said to me, well, what about the Julio and Jamal? And I'm like, what about it? And they was like, that's racist. Why is that racist? Well, I'm like, he said Karen too. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. He, he What's Karen. racist about it? If you're gonna call, if you're gonna generalize a group of white women and call them Karen, then you gotta keep it short, right? If, if you if you're using slang, Karen, Julio, Jamal. Yeah. Like, who, who thought that was racist? That's that. That's why he's getting all the pushback. But oh. I mean, Matt Gates definitely has a history of oh. saying a lot of racist shit, but. I think in that situation right yeah. there. Also, that's not to like discredit. Like, I understand the minorities that come here, the non-whites that come here, they've also heard things that Republican representatives have said that have sounded really fucking racist. Yeah. So they're like, okay, maybe that's not the party for me. Mm -hmm. And they didn't feel like that party was looking out for their best interests in the same way that Democratic Party has definitely tried to appeal to minorities. So there's other reasons. But in terms of the actual values of the Republican Party, I think they are much more on the line uh, or in line with what uh, immigrant values. Yeah, I didn't even want to get that deep with it, bro. Uh, I was just talking about Karen, Julio, and Jamal. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm with you, though. What you said was some brilliant shit. Yeah. But I was just like, you know yeah. I was just wanting to talk about the Karen, the Julios, and Jamals. Like, Wait, is it wrong to like assume Jamal's a black guy, Julio's a Spanish guy, and then Karen's What is your best Trump? friend's name? <laughs> Jamil. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Jamil, Jamal, Jamil. It's you close. You know what I'm saying? It's close. It's, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's close. There's a you lot know? of black Jamals. Yeah. Not that many white uh, Jamals. And I, very few non-Hispanic Julios. And by the way, is Don Julio racist? They could have named it to kill it anything. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they could have named it anything. Mm -hmm. They called it Don Julio. Why not just Don? <laughs> yeah, can anybody even make the argument for this being racist? I don't think so. I mean, maybe if you said like 
uh, like a tropey black name, like Shaniqua or something like that, then it might feel a little bit more racist because how many Shaniquas are you actually meeting? But Jamal is like a very just normal black dude name. Seriously, how many white Karens do we know? I know one, and that's my business partner. Yeah. Like how many white Karens? All the Karens I knew growing up was black. Yeah. How many Karens? Like who? No, what? I only know white Karens. Yeah, I only know really? white Karens. Yeah. What about Becky's? Now, <laughs> Becky's are white. By the way, <laughs> Becky... Was, is Becky considered a slur? Because that's Why? kind of a term of endearment. It is. <laughs> Becky is blowjobs, right? That's what I'm saying. Give me that. Rappers made songs. Yeah. Give me that Becky. Well, Beyonce made it like it's a slur. Really? From yeah. the song. Oh, because she was referring to a white guy or a white girl as it. She said Becky with the good hair. How did Karen replace Becky, guys? Yeah, it's kind of fucked up. When did Karen replace <laughs> Becky? <laughs> Karen straight up replaced Becky, yo. Taylor was telling me the other day that she's she's upset that white girls give much better head than black girls, and I was like, I don't know if that's something you should be upset by. That was always the, that was always the, the growing up. That's what yeah, they. Like, used to, I don't get why you're upset by that. Like, you know, you know what's so crazy though. Growing up, and I don't know if Alex, you had this. They would always tell us that white girls were faster. Yeah. So yeah. if you wanted to get some, you you connect with the white girl. That's why, and I tell people all the time, like when you was younger. That, what, what what was this? That was super weird. Again, that was Son. a little sus. Alex, why? just talk. You, you have a microphone. No, Your sign language is crazy. Al, Al, you did What's do. Up with you, yeah, man? Really. You he asked me movie. what that was. I said, fuck quicker. But like, why'd I, you do that? That's I, I, I kind of did this, though. He jerked off and tossed it. No, no. throw it. No, I pumped. You do it and come like LeBron throws powder, bro. Why would you do that? You can't Superman like that. That made me feel uncomfortable. I didn't want the mics to pick it up. I'm trying to play Pictionary here, whatever fucking game that is or whatever. No, that was weird. What was he trying to tell I you? I thought that made me feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm right. just trying to talk about <laughs> yeah, white girls giving better head than black girls with my friends. But you guys are trying to say that white girls fuck super easy. That's what they, that's what we were told when we were younger. When we were younger, that's the things they would put in our heads, right? And because they did though. I was just having this conversation with somebody. <laughs> this is what black kids, <laughs> they did. No, though. you think about black and slavery? That's wild that they used to say that though. You said what? You thinking back going, to what? Did she? Did it sound back, like? Did it sound like back. what you thought it sounded like? That's what she said. Thinking back to slavery. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yo, Taylor, they, the go, they try to like, pick on us this episode. <laughs> so she's like, no, yo, I know, it's stop fine. punching no, back. I'm saying, I'm saying it's wild that it came to white girls being sluts to us. Because back in slavery, they used to rape us. Oh, or, Jesus. We were having fun on. until you brought this fucking thing. Taylor, sorry. I really don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Alex, give me another hand. Like, <laughs> like, there you go. Call you go. Flag on the you go. Something. Call a timeout or something, yeah. Alex. Use your hands for some good. What so, the fuck is Taylor talking white about? White girls. White all girls. I'm saying is it's yeah. interesting how the storyline changed. That's all I'm saying. But why do these black dudes even know that the white girls are fast? Like, why aren't they staying true to the sisters? Like, shouldn't they <laughs> but no, that have was that the, information? I was having like, that Why do they have so much no, data on that? Because somebody was saying about how, you know, black men has always lost white women. And I'm like, <laughs> no, they don't. I'm like, yo, when we were younger, they would tell us the white women were the ones putting out and the and the black we women weren't. Too. So the black dudes, it was like they it was like they didn't even want it, but the, the white girls were so fast they couldn't even help it. But I've seen it though in my high school, they <laughs> like, were definitely fast. These poor black dudes. Well, everybody's white girls faster so than you. Fast. So you need to run. Now listen, also <laughs> Damn, yo. That was Asshole. fucking the cra crazy. The crazy thing. So these is white girls are stealing your man and you can't even catch them. Damn. 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 And then I, I wasn't dating the men there. But, but wait, white girls could beat you in a race or beat you to couldn't. suck a guy or, like, <laughs> or whatever. Like, what could they beat you at? What is a white girl beating you at? Yeah, how fast were you? Because are you fast? First of all, I was, first of all, yeah, yeah. let's get everything fucking straight. Let's get it straight. Yeah. Because no, let's keep it I was gay. the fastest. Yo, let's get it straighter a, than nah, a white girl. My team, gay, my team was the fastest in state. My team was the fastest in state. Yep, year I know. 2009. 2009, I looked um, that up. Um... What was the question again? I'm sorry. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> when motherfuckers lie. Exactly. When Let's motherfuckers lie in that train of getting around lying. so fast. You were lying so bad that you I'm couldn't not. even remember what you were lying yes. about. You had to get the question again to make your lie even make because sense. You had no, you just ready to lie. Because y'all started so talking about racing. You was racing. ready to lie. You went out to get too fast. To you went out to get too fast. Now you disqualified. You're you went out to get too fast. The gun didn't even go off yet. You went out to get you disqualified. This is why black dudes fucking white girls, yo. This is why black dudes fucking white girls, because they already suck a dick. They're not going through this whole time. <laughs> they already sucking dick. They don't need to go the first of all and the second of all. How many of alls do we have? <laughs> White girls is sucking. The milk. But that's my, the but milk that's is what open. I'm saying though. They were that's why the black guys wanted to gravitate towards the white girls a lot in my school because they gave it up. 
That was always Why the stereotype. Why weren't the black girls giving it up? Well, they also weren't man enough. I think for the black girls there too. Oh my god! I'm dead yo, serious. Yo, black dudes, because no, yo, yo, Sharon just said y'all pussy. I did say y'all pussy because Sharon said y'all pussy. I did pussy. say y'all pussy. Hannah Taylor. Again, yo, Hannah Taylor, Joey, don't shake yo. your head. I'm saying the ones in my school. Yes, Shut. they were pussy. Wow. Because, I don't even care. I let, I let Reddit fight my battles. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, okay. Go ahead, go off, go okay, off, queen. Yeah. Go, go off, off, queen. Go off, three <laughs> fingers. Let's go. <laughs> so now look. This is crazy, yo. So look. This is. crazy. <laughs> Yo, I mean, so, it's really just because the black dudes was pussy at our school. No, they couldn't handle no. us black dudes. I, I, God damn, damn, they, they, they got they mad. They didn't have no cum left Listen, in their balls. They literally... Because the white girls were sucking it out. <laughs> have you ever been swallowed? <laughs> swallowed. <laughs> they got mad because we gave them attitude. That's why. And why would you give them attitude? Because they were trying to be fast with us. Do you remember the stereotype, too? If you had a girlfriend, like if you had a girlfriend, it, it was you didn't let your girlfriend do so-called slutty stuff to you. That's how we, when you was young, so you uh, wouldn't want, like, head from your girlfriend. Man, get out of here, yeah. bro. Wait, you don't what? remember that when you was young? <laughs> Never. I definitely remember. I couldn't nah. wait for some head. Nah, that was it, shit. My girlfriend wouldn't swallow, but, like, I'll bust in a random girl's face, but you wouldn't do that to your girlfriend. That's what, that's what they used to yeah. tell us. Like, Alex is absolutely right. Y'all never had that shit? That's like something out of The Sopranos. Where it's, it's just, just like, I don't know. So did y'all also do anal with them because they still want to be a friend? What are you talking about? Taylor, what's up with you? Who are you? God damn. What the fuck, young prostitute? What are you talking about? I'm asking you. What are you trying to tell? You're getting too horny, yo. You're getting too horny. What are you saying? Let's go too horny. You're too horny, yo. I don't like it like that. You're too horny. No, listen. Too horny. Taylor, you wild. No, you really are too horny. Yo, yo, yo. Take a deep breath, yo. You're wild. You need to cool yourself off. What is wrong with you? You, man. Do what you need, but you're pulsing right now. You're telling nice high school stories. Who the fuck was doing that in high school? Anal? Ain't anal, Taylor? Y'all didn't hear. Your ass ain't even developed fully yet. It's not. Didn't they It's do really it? not. It don't even have enough wrinkles. <laughs> your ass ain't even got wrinkles yet. You gonna buff like an unwrinkled asshole? Yes. That's disgusting. The Ale Andrew was in lying, yo. Your ass don't even got wrinkles yet. I hadn't even taken 2,000 You know why they call Wait. it a brown? Brown you're eye, they call me. it a brown eye because it doesn't even fully get open until you're 25. 25. You're trying to tell me. Remember CBS? Old. You know CBS is a butthole. The CBS logo? Yup. Look up the CBS logo. <laughs> Everybody thinks that's an eye. Look it up. It's, it's a butthole it's turned butthole. this way. <laughs> I'm serious. It's, it's a butthole turned yet. sideways. You didn't, you didn't hear Why about... would you even bring up anal? You need to you're stop being to so that... fucking horny. Say, repeat after me. I'm not horny. That's right. <laughs> say, repeat after me. That's say, right. yo, repeat after me. Say it with me now. I'm not horny. Say it just like that. You say think, I'm not horny. You think I'm joking about say, the CBS come on. logo too? Say I'm not Why? horny. Look it up. Can you say it together? I'm not horny. <laughs> look, <laughs> look it up. Butthole. So I am a this, woman uh, of the Lord. She can't even I'm really say it. I'm trying to be. Butthole, <laughs> but, listen, buttholes are like this. In, the in CBS depth? logo is like this. So uh, it's a butthole turned, turned to sideways. The side, yeah. And you didn't know that CBS stands for? Cock butt syndrome. No, comfortable butt sex. Oh, that's also good. Yes. <laughs> 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 go to a fucking ad. No, we're not gonna go to an ad. You need to take five deep let me, breaths. Wait, Alex, for real, for real. You didn't hear about how nobody no. heard about anal in junior no. high school. You got it. People don't even believe that. What you're was going, didn't say junior high school? What was going high on school, in Philly, yo? Yeah, what was going on? Now in we Philly? know why it's a crack in the Liberty Bell because that's <laughs> insane. <laughs> People having <laughs> anal sex in junior. Taylor, what is no, wrong with you? No, I wasn't having it. All I'm saying, I've heard from black men yeah. that the white girls were not having, or it's not, it wasn't even white girls. As Taylor, Catholic we was girls, barely getting It was vagina. Catholic. Look, look. Julia. They was, uh, you know what I'm saying though. Yeah. Okay, so stop playing with me. Why? You not even playing with her. You. <laughs> Alex knows what I'm talking Say about. I'm not He's trying to be an asshole. Say I'm not horny. I'm giving my body to the what Lord. What are you doing? <laughs> Yo, oh, now. Alex is what I was doing. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> so, all right, all right, okay. Yo, okay, so what's up with you? Yeah, I see what we do. Uh, uh, you see uh, what they do, right? Yo, uh, real talk. Uh, <laughs> you see what they do. Uh, what you're doing is fucking disgusting. This time yeah. is crazy. You got going on. <laughs> they, yeah. Dang, I ain't never seen no shit. Everything like is this. so sexual. It's obviously like, turning Taylor on. I didn't even realize you guys had a thing Dang, like that. Y'all the ones 
turned on, you got your fucking finger, your ass in the fi- wait. Yeah. What, is it? Shut the damn! You almost had it. You <laughs> almost yeah. had it. Yeah. Your finger in the yeah. ass. Yeah. You got your finger in the ass. It was Lord. too fast for your mouth, man. <laughs> 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 what are you talking nah. about? Nah, the doctor nah, clearly turned you on from a couple weeks ago. Mm. That's why oh, she tried to do a call back for uh, from listen a week. Yeah. Prostate exams Kill. are Don't great. Don't for people. Don't downplay her call. I didn't get my prostate. You didn't? No, not yet. Should I? Aren't you old enough to get one? <laughs> what you trying to say? That's huh? Fuck, I'm talking about. Keep going. No, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm go on. Try, I'm not trying to be mean, yeah. but you're, trying to say, yeah. huh? you're, you're old. Saying I'm my assholes old. I was saying you're old. I shit three times a day minimum. That's right. That doesn't mean you don't have an old asshole. <laughs> 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 she said, yeah, asshole, fully turned this way. <laughs> That's what she That's said. That's right. Put the CBS yeah. logo back where yeah. it belongs. No, nah, you're actually right. I should go get a prostate exam. Are you Dead scared ass. because of his story, though? I'm not Why? scared. That's part of the game. I'm more scared because Chris's story when yeah, he let Chris's them run a fucking choo-choo on him. <laughs> Chris, Chris, that was wild. That dude. was That's fucking still Chris didn't tell him no either. I know he just let you tell him yes either though. You didn't either. Fingers too. No, I gave, I gave him Yama was deep up in that motherfucker right there to the knuckles. Chris, Chris, that's Chris shit is crazy. Chris got the two piece finger tendon fucking meal. Bro. Yeah, that was to the webbing, Chris. Did, they, did you feel webbing? Damn. But y'all, y'all just get a finger. Did you feel webbing? Two piece finger tendon meal, no fries. Yo. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Y'all Ooh. worry about a finger. We have a whole metal thing that comes up on us. You got a what? You all worry about a finger. We have a whole metal thing that goes in us. A vibrator? No, like I don't know what it's called, but when you go to gynecologists, they have to put something in, and it takes your. It's a spoon. It's not a spoon. It's just a spoon. What Taylor. is going on? What <laughs> is go- what's spoon. going on? What's this <laughs> yo, yo, show what you do. What's this yeah, movement yeah. right here? So what is this? <laughs> so what's up with not you? The spoon, oh Taylor. man, not the spoon. Oh, what are man. they eating out of you with a spoon? It's uncomfortable. It's like at least this long. It spills. Hey, yo, yo, congratulations. It's cold. What are they looking for? Yeah, no, they have to. They have to sample our. Um, Yeast infection. Taylor, you don't know nothing about women's bodies. No. Yo. <laughs> yeah. Somebody needs to I'm tell trying you what to do with yours. Call Riley. <laughs> <laughs> they're sampling. You are a Republican no, dream. They're sampling yeah. our we have to look, tell women we do. what to do with they their bodies. Yep. <laughs> we really do. No Excuse clue. me. They're yeah. sampling our discharge to see if we have you know, any you infections have or anything else. They get our discharge. Is it honorable or dishonorable? Yeah, what is your discharge? Is it honorable or dishonorable? Do you have honorable or dishonorable <laughs> discharge? God damn it. Honorable? Which one is it? Is it honorable it's, or dishonorable discharge? I don't know what yours, you mean by that. Well, you know, I'm not here to tell a woman more about her body. Yeah, I don't, yeah, we I, don't want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, know, you should know more than us, but I You I'll should just, know if you got some honorable or dishonorable fucking well, how y'all discharge. How you already saying yeah. it? I never heard it. You got your <laughs> GYN? Like you, you got your GYN's email? Yes, I'm fine. Email though. her, send her a number, and just say, hey. Guys, just stop. say, hey, We're I need to know if that. my discharge is that. honorable. We're not about to do that. <laughs> dishonorable. Every no, woman you ask annually her. has to go to the gynecologist, make sure everything and is And they but tell you, you if your discharge is honorable now, or dishonorable. Just ask her if your discharge is honorable or dishonorable. I'm fine. Because I told y'all I'm on a spiritual journey anyway. Don't. don't have nothing to do with <laughs> anything. <laughs> Go do <laughs> just ask her. Next time, just please. And, and you don't even gotta make it public. This is so <laughs> Taylor, do that for me. Do that for us, Taylor. You don't have to make it public. Just please. I'm just serious. Send an email. Ask your GYN is your discharge honorable, honorable or, or dishonorable. dishonorable. That's it. I'm yeah. trusting you. Life you say it could be your own. Let's pay some bills. It's important. You should. No, it very But really. why are you saying like why are you saying it like that? Just say if it's you, clean or not. You've never no. asked your doctor that? If it's honorable or not? You never ask your GYN if your discharge is honorable or dishonorable? They they just say it's fine. Like, nah, what do you, you need a new GYN. Yeah. If they haven't man. even brought that yeah. up to you. What's that like, movie? Do you have a Figma? That's crazy. Chris, 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 That's crazy. Do you? This is how I felt when I went oh, to the doctor right. a couple weeks ago. You might not even have insurance, do you? I have insurance. Yeah, but does your insurance cover Figma? I'm not doing this with you. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Doing I'm not, what? I'm not. And go. This is how I felt when I went to get my prostate a couple weeks ago. That's I the felt thing. clueless because I was like, what are you talking about? 
But he I'm literally. Not, you're not about to fuck me up with this. I'm Go telling you the truth. Right, right, listen. Read. All the women out there that's listening, all the brilliant <laughs> women that listen, please hit Taylor up and tell her she tell needs her. to find out if her discharge is honorable, honorable or dishonorable. dishonorable. Please. Look. And please. make sure look, your look, insurance comes with stigma the because a lot let of me you know guys. that my discharge is honorable. Okay? What'd you say? If that's a good thing or not. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Taylor? I heard you, but I want to hear you again. Is, I need to hear you again. See, you I'm, I knew something was wrong with you. No, no, no. You said, no, you did. I heard what you said. You what said. did you say? Let me tell you something. The men in your life. Every man that tasted me, they want to keep tasting me. That's all I'm going to say. But what does that mean? What did you um, whatever, say? Whatever y'all talking about with this honorable and unhonorable shit, this take honorable. it as it is. Just take it as it is. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fuck y'all. Uh, Taylor, I'm serious, man. You need to talk to your GYN. Let's Yo. pay some bills, man. <laughs> Seriously, Taylor, we don't want you to get caught up in anything. We don't, man. We don't, man. We don't. We need you mean to too much to us. Yes, man. yes, please. Just ask. We need to know. You, well, I don't need to know. You need to know. Is your discharge honorable or dishonorable? Why don't you just tell me what you guys... Ask talking? your mom, then. Maybe, because I don't... Why don't you just tell... Text your mom. Y'all are talking already about women's shit, so just tell me, then. I'm just, text your mom. I'm, I'm cool. Or can you just text your mom? Andrew. Uh, that's kind what? of a wild question. What? Andrew. <laughs> what? Andrew. I could, but that's kind of a wild question. It is man. a wild question because you don't have my fucking mom's number. Stop playing with me. Uh, <sighs> Again, anyway. exactly. He's married. She's right. married too. So if you want my father to come up here I'm too. Be with you. Somebody and my gave, father's taller some, than you. Somebody gave my me some father's taller than you. Guess somebody what? Somebody sent me a part of day. You saw it in the studio. No, I didn't. If I'm going to taste it. I bet you it's not my mom's. I'm going to taste it. I, I let somebody else taste it and they went crazy. You ain't see when we was eating the pie? I wasn't eating. They was eating. You ain't see? No, nah, that's crazy. What are you man. talking about? That Actually, is crazy. Got, it's, it's, it's fire. Yeah. You out, Chris? I'm out. All right, man. Where go, you get going? That, go get that chicken two-piece finger tip. <laughs> no fries, man. <laughs> go for his weekly prostate. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, go, Chris going to get his weekly prostate. <laughs> Yo, y'all get so delirious. At <laughs> oh, Rocket Money. Uh, salute to Rocket Money. If I asked you how many subscriptions you have, would you be able to list all of them and how much you're paying? If you would have asked me this question before I started using Rocket Money, I would have said yes. But let me tell you, I would have been so wrong. I can't believe how many I had and all the money I was wasting, okay? Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills, okay? I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. They'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest, okay? Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions, okay? Stop wasting money on things you don't see. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash idiots. That's rocketmoney.com slash idiots. Rocketmoney.com slash idiots. All right, guys, this episode is also brought to you by having a lovely euphoric social, you know, sometimes even erotic buzz going. That THC high that you can get is going to be produced by Mood. Mood has got your back. Mood is known for their federally legal THC, and now they're adding the most potent product to their lineup yet, introducing hemp-based THCA flower, okay? This is the future of legal THC. Try it along with all of Mood's other amazing offerings like gummies, vape cartridges, and more. And for a limited time, Mood is giving our listeners a free THCA pre-roll and 20% off your first order. All you gotta do is visit hellomood.com and use our code IDIOTS. I'm telling you, by far, the best at producing that amazing THC high that we all know and love, but this is legal. You don't have to worry about this. This is no concern. This is the mood that you want to be put in. Let them help you get there. I'm telling you, absolute no brainer. Mood puts an end to guessing games with federally legal forms of THC extracted from hemp plants. This is the one that you will do forever. So right now, if you want third-party tested in drug enforcement agency registered labs, if you want sourced from small family farms and grown organically, you're going to have to get 
Mood. Mood has got you covered for that. Great for both beginner and veteran users. The great tasting gummies, the classic flower, convenient pre rolls, and so much more. Try Mood's new THCA flower today. And for 20% off your first order and a free THCA pre roll, go to hellomood.com. Use the promo code IDIOTS. That's hello, M O O D.com. The code is IDIOTS for 20% off your order and a free THCA pre roll. Now let's get back to the show. Yo, church announcements. What we got showed, C? Yo, uh, the Life Tour, man. Thank you guys so much for everybody who came out to D.C. We are coming to Nashville. We are coming to Austin, and we added another show in Phoenix. Go get those right now. Next city up for the Life Tour is going to be the first weekend in March. Philly, we added a second show. Might be a few seats left for that at this moment, but I would go get those immediately. Uh, thank you guys so much, man. This has been absolutely amazing. Like... Yeah, it's just, this has been crazy. This is what I dreamed of doing my whole life, like doing these venues, and doing these these massive theaters, these arenas, and it's just an awesome experience. And you thank wanted you guys so them, much. bro. We out here, we out here. You Got wanted them. Because of them. Because, because everybody Because of them, listening. you wanted them. There we go. You wanted them. What about you, Doc? Oh, uh, what we got, man? Oh, man, it's always something. Uh, Shallow Waters. Shallow Waters is out there. That's true. It is, though. I mean, that's the, trick. that's the crazy thing about what I do. What I do is always out there. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I got a book in print. You know, I got uh, SBH Productions with Audible. So all of that work is out there. It's like, you know, uh, Unleashed for Love starring Alicia Renee is out there right now. Broke Down Profits with Jonathan Majors and Brian Tyree Henry and Dasha Polanco and Donnell Rollins is on there. That's out there right now. Uh, Invisible Generals by my man Doug Melville. Uh, that's out there right now. So, yeah, man, just thank you to everybody who's been supporting. We got it. Oh, that, you know what? That's something I can what? tell y'all about. Uh, the next release coming out from Black Privilege Publishing, my book imprint with Simon & Schuster, is courtesy of the good sister Alice Randall. It's called My Black Country, A Journey Through Country's Music, Black Past, Present, and Future. Okay? That will be out April 9th. That will be out April 9th, 2024, man. Uh, Alice Randall, My Black Country. So if you're a fan of country music and you're a fan of, you know, uh, just a lot of the black country artists that are out right now, this is a great book for you. But it's not even just about the country artists that are out right now. It's about black people's history and uh, influence on country music. So that'll be out uh, April 9th, My Black Country by Alice Randall. Okay, so you can go pre-order that now wherever you buy books. Bang. Now, um, <clears throat> oh man, I wanted to talk to you about this, Schultz. Now... You know, we just uh, came out with a, a, a another another media company called Reason Choice Media. Reason Choice Media is a vertical with iHeart that is just a political vertical, mm. right? So all the shows we're going to have on that network are just political shows. The first show that we launched, our flagship show, is the Native Land Podcast with Andrew Gillum, uh, Tiffany Cross, and Angela Rye. It debuted at number one wow. on... Apple Podcasts, right? And it's like top three right now in news. So, you know, we've been making our rounds. Like me and Angela did CNN together, MSNBC together. And I sat down with Fox, you know what I mean? I sat down with Fox before, you know, salute to uh, Joseph, Joseph, Joseph Wolf. How do I pronounce Joseph's last name? Joseph Wolfsham. Wolfsham or Wolfsham. But I sat down with Joseph. Um, and, you know, we talk about a bunch of different things. I'm the type of person, man, I don't have a problem having conversations with people who... I may not share the same ideologies with, you know yeah. what I mean? I, I don't have to have the same background as you. I don't have to be the same race as you. I just like to talk to different people, yeah. you know? That's just, the, that's just the curious side that exists in me. So I was talking to Joseph, and Joseph asked me this question right here. He asked me about the migrant crisis, mm. and will the migrant crisis have an impact on the upcoming election? Mm. This is what I said. I have the privilege, man, of uh, you know, doing morning radio and speaking to, you know, working class people every single day. Of, you know, being involved in my community from, you know, New York, New Jersey, and South Carolina, where I get to look people in the eyes and have, you know, real conversations, you know, with them. And, you know, people are really concerned about this issue. Like, I, I, I honestly have never spoken to as many people who are concerned about the migrant issue as I have, you know, o over the past year. And, I mean, I've heard everything from, you know, uh, the, uh, the gang MS-13, you know, uh, over in the neighborhoods. I've heard, um, you know, what we saw just happened in New York City where the migrants... They took 2,000 migrants and, and put them in the schools and made the schools stay home, made the, the students stay home and, and, and uh, you know, do school via, via, via Zoom. And that was a big issue. Like, I mean, people were calling the radio station that was just this week, you know, really, really, really complaining about that. So I've never seen, you know, working class people who I interact with every day until this past year really, really, really express their frustration for the migrants. And not even just the people. Like, you see politicians who once, you know, championed having migrants in the city, like the mayor Eric Adams of New York. Now they're like, yo, hold up. This is this is too much. You know, we heard White President Kamala Harris say, hey, don't come. Like, we've, we've seen that. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a real, 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 you know, uh, real big issue. And, you know, immigration 
Simple immigration that will be resolved because of the filibuster. Like the only things that pass are issues where we filibuster. You need the Republicans and Democrats to come together and create some comprehensive immigration reform. But you know, for whatever reason, they don't seem to be able to do that. Of course, he's the president of the United States of America. If he can take credit for the, for the good things that happen in this country, he has to take credit for the bad. Well, those things happen on on his watch. You know, and I'm telling you, people are going to go to those sound bites. They're going to go to those sound bites where they saw, you know, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris and Mayor Eric Adams and all these other you know liberals and Democrats. They went to go to those sound bites of them welcoming them, welcoming them, welcoming them into sanctuary cities. And I mean, you know, when uh, Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott pulled that stunt where they were you know shipping migrants to these sanctuary cities, you know, dropping them off, you know, right in front of you know the Vice President's house. You know, as, as cruel as that was, as inhumane as that was, it, it, it was effective. Clearly it was effective, you know, because it made a lot of those Democrats start singing a different tune. And I mean, the voters see that, you know, the voters see that. And so what did that look like to the voters? Just on the surface, just on the surface, it looks like Republicans were right about the issue and Democrats got it wrong. And now a lot of Democrats are starting to sound like the Republicans sounded. So it makes a lot of people say, well, damn, Republicans were, were actually right on that issue. Just, just on the surface, just, just playing on the surface, that's how it looks, you know, to average voters. Now, now I'm, I'm going to ask you, <clears throat> just you as a person who observes content, mm-hmm. And here's things. What did I say wrong in that? I didn't say anything wrong. You know, I mean, again, I don't know enough information about, like, the school, why the school was used and why the kids weren't there. Like, I don't know the nuance to this, but I think the overall messaging is is great. And he absolutely should take responsibility. If he's going to take responsibility for the good, he takes responsibility for the bad. He's in charge. You know, like this is your team and you're the captain of the ship right now. You got to run it. There's articles. Uh, there's an article that came out. I'm not even going to say who. You got to find it yourself. I'm not giving them no love. But what? Well, I don't care. It was an MSNBC article. And it said, <laughs> I'm going to read you the headline. <laughs> I'm going to read you the headline of the article. And this is probably why they write stuff like this to get shout out. So I'll probably bleep it. But it says, Meek Mill, Charlemagne the God helped to push MAGA messaging. Mm. <laughs> like... How is that MAGA messaging? I mean, the problem with saying MAGA messaging is there, there's MAGA messaging that you also agree with, right? Not everything that is MAGA you disagree with. But is that MAGA messaging or is that just observing what is clearly a problem? If it wasn't a problem, John Fetterman, who's a Democrat uh, of Pennsylvania, Senate wouldn't be saying it's a problem. Yeah. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris wouldn't be saying it's a problem. Mayor Adams. President Joe Biden wouldn't be saying it's a problem. He said it's a problem and he's ready to work with it, with Republicans to get it solved. Uh, Mayor Eric Adams wouldn't be saying it's a problem. Mm-hmm. Go talk. To, only thing I would tell anybody who thinks that's MAGA messaging, get out of your little bubble on social media. Well, it is MAGA messaging, but... It, is it, though? It's MAGA messaging, of course. How is it MAGA messaging to say it's a problem at the border? Because I would argue that uh, the most liberal politicians would be wanting to accept these people at the border and create, because they're refugees fleeing from, like, you know, some But they're not horrible anymore. Situation. We well, don't know. Vice but President some, uh, Harris saying, don't come. Joe Biden saying, don't come. This, this, is, a, this is a newer <laughs> position for them. That's true. What That's I would true. say is that this That's has been true. inspired by the MAGA position that most people probably agree on. Yeah. What, what I'm saying is the article is unfair to you and Meek because the connotation with MAGA or the perception of MAGA are a lot different things than what you were saying. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'm telling you that what they did with the migrants is inhumane and yeah. cruel, but it still was effective because it made Democrats change their tune, yeah. right? I don't see how, you know, pointing out a, a, a problem that is happening, you know, is considered mad. It is messaging. a problem. We got to do something about it. There's no question. By the way, in this article, he don't even mention what ma- what my MAGA messaging is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, all he does, the scroll up, scroll up, Taylor. Scroll up. Because there's another good one that I want to talk about. Scroll up. It says, uh, scroll up some more. He goes, stop right there. Scroll, scroll. He goes, and then there's the raft of right-wing media who's been touting hip-hop radio host Charlemagne the God seemingly endless public attacks on President Joe Biden and the Democratic Party. This is the one problem I have with us, right? And by us, I mean black people. Why can you not critique Democrats as a black person? I feel like you should be able to hold any party accountable. I wonder if part of this is like, uh, systemic is wrong because there aren't these like systems in place, but like, you know how, as a black person, criticizing black people publicly is always a dicey situation mm. because you feel like... Joe Biden ain't black? No, 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 no. I'm, oh. I'm saying culturally speaking, it's like you guys would want to criticize yourselves within your community, but you don't want to do it publicly because then the other side or racist could use what you're saying to justify how they feel, et cetera. So maybe that exists also with the 
almost like dogmatic approach to the Democratic Party for black people for years where it's like, uh, you can't give these Republicans anything. You can't give conservatives anything because they're going to use it against us. And I feel like now for the first time and maybe... I think black people are way more smarter than that. No, I agree I, with I, you. I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I, think we, I think we discredit ourselves intellectually well, when we act like we can't critique somebody and still know so what's our, what's in our best interest to vote. This is something Vivek was talking about. We had Vivek on flagrant. He was talking about... Uh, oh, I told him to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was great. No, he didn't tell me, but yes, yeah, yes. yeah. But uh, wow. thank you for that. But uh, I, said that, I said that in an interview, too. But uh, he basically came on and he was like, he was talking about the managerial class. And it's a term that there's a bunch of terms that are like kind of amorphous that they use for this shit, but it doesn't matter. But the idea that there's this group of people that think that they know what is best for you and you're too stupid to make the right decision for yeah. yourself. And that's something that he's trying to break, break down and get rid of and that's part of his agenda. This is maybe an example of that where they're like, where basically you criticizing the Republican Party or maybe agreeing with a philosophy of the Republican Party, you're smart enough to do that. And that's not going to mean that you're going to get in bed with every single policy they have, but it is okay for you to feel this way and to have other thoughts. I feel like if you lie, if you lie to, if you, uh, this is what I always tell folks, and I tell people this in the Democratic Party. If you lie for the Democratic Party, then they won't believe you when you tell the truth about Republicans. Because mm. everybody's got eyes, everybody's got ears. Once again, you intellectually discredit black people when you act like we can't critique this administration or any administration Absolutely. and still know who to vote for in, in regard Absolutely. to our interests. I don't feel like it's black people only. I think that's just the nature of both politics, parties and politics. Oh, because it's like, if I you agree. speak out against I agree. Trump, Tribal, they yeah. attack you. Oh, I agree. It's like, I oh, agree. stop the liberal agenda. If which, you is say so, anything. which is why it's so confusing to me, right? It's not confusing. I just understand, I understand what it is. I can go to my comments and you'll literally have people like this who'll say, oh, you're helping... Trump win, you got to stop critiquing Biden, yada, yada, yada. But then MAGA be on my head because <laughs> I'm out here saying Donald Trump is a fascist. I'm out here saying mm -hmm. Donald Trump is the yeah. end of democracy as we know it. Like, I'm, I'm saying these things. And it's yeah. not like Fox isn't reporting that, too. Yeah. Fox reports that. CNN reports that. MSNBC reports that. When I did Chris Wallace, they all reported that. This person right here, whoever wrote this article, I just feel like you just trying to get clicks. Well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It says the Breakfast Club host has pitched himself in recent years as a political expert on black voters, specifically black men. I've never pitched exactly. myself in that. <laughs> when the for you saying that shit? I ain't never said that shit. He said, rather than a deeply controversial shock jock. He went <laughs> critical. He went, sorry, he went to Google Analytics and he was like, what are the views for Charlemagne and MAGA? And it said a lot. And he's like, okay, I got to do it. Like, yeah. He said right wingers have seemed almost giddy to present his critique of the Biden administration as one that's shared by black voters. Fox News writes about him constantly, for example. That's not my problem. You know what I mean? It's, it's like it's not my problem when CNN does it or MSNBC does it. When I did MSNBC with Joy Reid, I literally said verbatim, I know why Fox News is constantly posting but me. Does, does he disagree with your overall point? Yes, he said, I've seen little evidence to suggest he really has his ears to the culture, and I've disagreed with it, even with all due respect, when it's been broached here at MSNBC. Listen, man, here's the thing. If you actually spoke to people uh, within... The community. The community, within the world, within society, and not just what you see on social media, you would hear these conversations happening. You would hear these conversations about, you know, uh, the, the, the migrants happening. Like, I'm not making this up based off any, uh, you know, any points I saw somebody on the right say or any points I saw somebody on the left say. I'm getting this from people. I do not take it for granted that I get to talk to working class people every day. I'm talking to them on the radio. When I'm leaving the radio station in the middle of New York City, I'm talking to them. They're coming yeah. up to me having these conversations. So when a person asks me a simple question, do I think immigration is going to have an impact on the election. Isn't that a yes? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, what kind of, that's, a, that's an obvious answer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And for these reasons. Now, one other thing, one other article I want to talk about, and it's, I'm only going to read one line in this article. This is from the dailycaller.com. 
Daily Caller wrote an article called Charlemagne the God Spreads Truth About America's Decline. It says, some Democrats grew frustrated Thursday on Twitter after radio personality Charlemagne the God spread truths about America's social decline. And what feels like a line straight out of the World Economic Forum's misinformation and disinformation crusade playbook, Charlemagne was labeled the biggest threat to fact-based news and policy. <laughs> by one particularly angry Democratic strategist. His lack of knowledge on policy issues yet amplified voices of problem. He has been spreading disinformation for years unabated. The culture deserves better. But here's the thing. No, this is what the article says. But here's the thing. None of what Charlemagne said was disinformation. <laughs> Fox News Digital asked Charlemagne whether he thought immigration was a major issue leading into the 2024 election cycle. The answer was a resounding yes. Then they quoted what I said. Uh, and he said... Yeah, they, they, they quoted what I said, and then they said that, uh, da, 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 da. he called out Democratic New York City Mayor Eric Adams. This is Adams. a hit. Of, of course it is. But, I don't, yeah, I, of, of course it is. But specifically a hit because, I mean, listen, there's, there's, there's conspiracy land we can enter, but the idea is if I can make you radioactive and I can make people, you know, distrust you, if I can make your voice silent, if I can make the audience not pay attention to you, then we don't have to worry about all the things you say, which are real things that that administration is not going to fucking address. I think they about 25 years too late. That's facts. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. You know what I'm you're right, that but is, it's like, like people who've been rocking with me, yeah. they know me. They know that's time why I don't even is, trip. Yeah. Like they yeah. understand me. They understand my they understand the nuance, yeah. and that's what we deal with a lot that a lot of people don't deal with. Yeah. They pick sides. Yeah. Nobody can have nuanced conversations about these things. Yeah. They just want to label you. The only thing I wanted to say about that Daily Caller article that I thought was so ridiculous, the biggest threat to fact-based news and policy, not AI, <laughs> not Fox News, not Donald Trump, not social media, yeah. not bots on social media. I'm the biggest threat the fact-based news and policy? Sounds like Jesus they want to discredit Christ. you. To me, that's what that Jesus. is. It's like, let's discredit this guy. Don't take him serious. And if you assume every time he posts something, it's not true or factless or actual misinformation, then they won't engage with you. Listen. But it sounds like they're just trying to silence you. That's what it feels like. And, and, and by the way, I'm not going to ever sit here and act like a political pundit. I'm not going to ever sit here and act like a political expert. What I talk about is how people are feeling mm. because that's what I hear. Right. So if you come to me and ask me what I'm hearing, I'm going to tell you what I'm hearing. Yeah. And by the way, all the polls show that clearly maybe what we're hearing is absolutely accurate. Okay, like it's really just that it's really just that simple. But I just ring, I just think what I'm basically saying is I think we all intellectually discredit black people when we act like we cannot critique Democrats and still not know what's in our best interest to vote for come November. No, come November. And also the other thing I will say, I don't care if you're a black Republican, I don't care if you're a black Democrat. If you're a black person, you have no reason to be beholden to these political parties the way that you do. This, this, treat, this shit is business. What the fuck has any of those parties mm -hmm. ever done for black people for y'all to be sucking their dicks the it's way that y'all do? I don't care if you're a black conservative or black Democrat. Why do y'all got so much political cock in your mouth? That's true. Like, there's <laughs> no reason to be in love with these parties like this mm. at all. Like, it's actually, actually crazy. Yeah. Actually, the country is better served if that doesn't happen. If none of us are beholden, because if none of us are beholden, they all have to manipulate their strategies to represent us. And right now they don't really have to. They go, okay, we got the black boat, that's 12%. And then the woman boat is over here, that's this percent. Oh, we got it 60%. Okay, we're good, no matter what, we don't have to change anything. They actually want us to be more segregated in our voting practice. Schultz, you are absolutely positively correct. Like that is so accurate. Like I, we know what people are going to do. That's why it's interesting when you see white women le leaving the Republican party. Mm -hmm. But then you see uh, some, some Spanish men and black men going towards the Republican party. I think few you know, people just interesting. feel, I think people just feel disillusioned with the government, man. And I think they have for like a few election cycles now. Like, I just don't think they feel like their needs are being represented. And to I give agree. Vivek credit, that's what he was talking about. It's like, there is this chasm between what a person wants and the representatives that they get to choose from. The fact that we have to choose from Biden and Trump right now is a failure of the democratic process in a man. lot of ways. Come on, man. Because the reality is, is not enough people liked Trump to keep, if you believe that the election was completely real, not enough people liked Trump 
in order for him to continue being president. If you, if every, let's just assume that everything is good to go with the election. You lost, not enough people liked you. That just, they, they saw the job you did and they weren't happy enough with it for you to continue doing it. Now, you won obviously the first one. I, maybe he beats Biden this time, I think he might do it. But it's a problem where we don't even have representation that is satisfactory. That when, when nobody's happy. I hear people, everybody's saying- why, they want so, Sorry to interrupt you, but like, why do you think we keep voting for political outsiders? Well, maybe because we don't like what's on the inside. Are, are, are not even political outsiders, people that just are different. Barack Obama was different. Uh, well, to me, I look at him almost as a political outsider because he barely spent any time in politics. If he had been in politics for 20 years, we probably wouldn't trust his ass either. At a certain point in time, when every single politician that talks to you tells you something that ends up not being true, you start to be a little disillusioned. Damn. It's not that crazy to say, right? I'm gonna say, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I wanna, I want damn, I, I should have sent you this, Taylor. Did you see what Hillary said about Biden? Mm. <laughs> oh my God. What'd she say? She basically, she, she was just like, yo, the problem with Biden is not that he's old, it's that he's boring. She was like, Hillary what? said that? Hillary Clinton said that. <laughs> no, I'm like, no way. That's there's no I'm gonna send it to, hold on, I'm gonna send it to you. I was trying to DM it to Taylor. Just, there's no text way. It to you? Okay, I'm gonna text There's it no to way you. Hillary fucking Clinton of all people. Bro, said that. that's my whole point. But guess what? That was a, if, if that was some, a bit. If somebody black <laughs> She's said funny that, now. if I said something like that, it's, here you go. This kind of rhetoric is so weird. You're just trying to help Trump win. Mm -hmm. No, how about listen yep. to what people are saying? You got it, Taylor? Listen to this. This is on the Pantsuit Podcast, which I didn't even know existed. Perfect name for it. <laughs> the problem that Biden has is not that he's old. He's old, okay? That's that's an issue. It's a reality. He's gotten more done as an old man that, you know, many people, you know, half his age could have gotten done. Sure. But he's boring. And why is he boring? Because he gets up every day and does a job. And he models mm -hmm. responsible leadership. And he's not a performer. And, and he, you know, he's not constantly in our face saying something outrageous so that we all are going, oh, my God, I don't know what he's going to do next. And we can't turn away. It's a huge problem because performance politics, whether it was Boris Johnson in London um, or Donald Trump in the United States, is a form of, you know, entertainment yep. that kind of helps people avoid being citizens. You know, I, I, I'm a consumer of entertainment and this is entertaining to me. Now, since America is so obsessed with celebrity, could someone who lacks star power ever energize this country ever again? Barack Obama was a fucking star. He was a star. Here's what I'll say also. Trump, like, what, love him or hate him. He's a, he's a star. star. And he was, he, he is, clearly, he was a star. He's a people. star. He never was a politician. He's a fucking celebrity. Yeah. Uh, here's what I say. It's like, if that's the game, stop bitching and get better. Like, She's complaining that the game changed and she's doing that same thing that so many people do in every different profession. They're like, oh, I have to do this new thing to make it now? Yeah, pussy. Yeah, yeah. yeah pussy, you do. Yeah. That's it. Do you want it bad enough or not? You can complain about how the game changed, right? And then keep losing, which is what she did. Or you could do it. I See had who Joe Biden just hired? Ooh. He hired the research, the, the former research producer of John Stewart's The Daily Show. Great job. Mm. I mean, not The Daily Show, The Problem on Apple. Hired the former research producer of John Stewart's The Problem. Yes. Yes. We did, I, I'm pretty sure if you dig up an old brilliant idiots episode, we said that the Democrats need to go hire the people who do Nike campaigns or something. Yeah. To help them with their messaging. But she is right in that, like, He's boring, but then she started criticizing the marketplace right now. It's like, the marketplace is the marketplace. So you need to be entertaining now and a great politician. You, you don't go, hey, everybody, stop liking what you like. Yeah. You need to now be entertaining and great. By the way, this didn't just start. I mean, I'm old enough to remember where it started, at least for my generation. Which was? Well, there was a guy that Hillary knows very well, <laughs> okay? <laughs> what is it? What was that guy's name? <laughs> Sweet Dick something. Whoa. What was it? <laughs> no, that's not, that's, no, that, never mind. That's his name in Arkansas. What? Willie, um, <laughs> Bill, <laughs> so Bill Clinton. Okay? That's what is that, that Billy? Is what the fuck, that fuck like was that? The sweet talk at. <laughs> what the then, fuck was that? You never knew that? his nickname was Sweet Dick Willie? You mean, no. <laughs> you didn't know that? No, I don't think anybody William did. Clinton? No. Sweet Dick Willie. But he started what that. What the fuck? On the Arsenio Hall show, playing the goddamn saxophone. He was entertaining as fuck. And he called himself Sweet Dick Willie? No, I think his side shit called him that, man, probably. 
Well, I'm sorry. I have to spell the joke out, guys. I'm not the comedian here. I just thought everybody would get that. You know, Bill Clinton, you know, he's got a reputation for slinging that thing. Ben, yeah, but why would it be a sweet dick? dick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> also, you were so committed. I really thought it was yeah. the name. <laughs> and I thought you confused him with someone else. Come on, bro. You, you know what's so that? funny? You I was with me. Like, like, I know he's talking about Bill. But, but, but not that sweet I went to a Bill Clinton and he said sweet dick. And I was like, is he confused this with another politician? And what politician was called sweet dick? <laughs> I was thinking, it's like, wait, Richard Nixon? He's like, I Richard no Dick? Cool I don't know. I'm like, what's going on? Sweet Dick Willie. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> you, you, gotta, you gotta workshop that Clearly, one, bro. <laughs> like, Charlotte thinks that he got a sweet dick. Yo. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Why yes. you think it's yep. <laughs> sweet? That is crazy. That is crazy. What do you mean? Nah, that nah, was he does crazy. Think his dick is sweet. You, you definitely nah, think. You think his dick is sweet. You bro. think Bill got a sweet dick? It's wild, crazy. Yo, son. you literally just said Yo. Bill got a sweet dick. That's the problem. Is this. I did it. I said that's what people no, call no, him. You call that? The title. title. <laughs> it's you. You the only people that call him. Have you checked Monica Lewinsky's contacts? You no, don't know. I what the bro, fuck? We, she didn't nickname. have a cell phone back then. It was too far. <laughs> It was too long ago she didn't have a cell phone, okay? There's no evidence that shit even happened. Oh, God. The point is, he started that <laughs> no, shit. The point is, you got to stop with the sweet dick shit. You got to stop with the gargle. You got to stop with the all gargle. this. Yeah, gargle his dick. How the fuck you got caught again? How the fuck you got caught again? Come on, Tyler. How the fuck you got by the caught again? By the way, I was way, asking, though. Joe yes, Biden, you. <laughs> when Joe Biden debates Trump, he needs all of that. If I was Joe Biden, I wouldn't even debate <laughs> Donald Trump for real on stage. What would you do? Uh, d this. All of these. Sweet, 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 oh, oh, sweet dick oh, Biden? Oh, oh, what you mean? Oh, sweet it? dick. No, just, hey, oh. listen here, sweet dick. <laughs> 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 He's gonna uh, lose all the evangelists. <laughs> Man, that don't matter no more. Yo, listen, the language of politics he is needs dead. To be dead. All that evangelical shit, that shit is done. Nobody cares about Donald Trump killed the language of politics. So it's and a new Democrats, game play. Democrats haven't realized that yet. Not a You hear Republicans? Like, well, they don't give a fuck. Why would they? They won. That's the other thing. It's like, like, what is it? What are the, you know, victory silences the critics. So it's like, you could say Democrats don't get it, but they won the last election. So like, trust us, we know what to do. We're going to get this done. I don't know if they realize that a lot of people have kind of moved on. Schultz, the thing that nobody talks about when it, comes, when it came to 2020, there was a series of unfortunate events. Yes. You had COVID. Yes. You had... Also, mail you, you had George Floyd getting killed. <laughs> no, not you saying had, that it was elite... I'm not saying that it was, uh, what's it called, uh, election fraud, but like, I don't think people are leaving their house to vote for Biden and at the same number that they're willing to mail the shit. Schultz, in. you had COVID. You had the, you had George Floyd get killed. You had people in the streets protesting. America was in the ultimate unrest. Actually, yeah. I think if the pandemic don't happen, I don't know if Biden wins 2020. Wow. If the pandemic doesn't happen. I think Trump dropped the ball on the pandemic so bad that made a lot of motherfuckers be like, oh nah, fuck that. You know what I mean? Huh. That's what I that's what I personally believe. We don't have those. We don't have a series of unfortunate events this right. year. Right. Well, <laughs> you know, yes. Not yet. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Yo, did you enjoy tell you something? Yeah, but I thought he was really good. I think, I think that there's like certain, there's certain like uh, ideas that he has that are really sophisticated and they're hard to distill and communicate. And sometimes the way that he had done them in the campaign trails, he just used these buzzwords that are like attached to so many already negative sentiments that basically stop you from even thinking about it? I told him he dropped the ball. And the reason I say he dropped the ball is exactly what you just said. If you listen to him, he does have some really good ideas. Fantastic ideas but, that but, are well thought out. But what I said to him was, what was the point of running if none of y'all were going to really challenge Trump? Like, all of y'all came off as being Trump's lackey. Mm. If, you're, if you look like a lackey, y'all never look at you as a leader. Wow. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he was like, I disagree with that. And I, but no, you, you, that's how you came off to us. But when I hear you talk now, I'm like, oh. This guy's good. He, he, yes, when, you're not, when he's not being trump light. Yeah. When he's not spewing all of the right-wing conspiracies yeah. that you see on yeah. YouTube, when he's not 
kissing Trump's ass, when he's just being himself? I think, yeah, he's really good. He's really impressive. I think short form communication is difficult for him. And uh, long form, if you have him for an hour, you have him for half hour, you have him two hours, yeah, you yeah, could yeah. really get to the bottom of stuff. But he even said it. Now he's like, yeah, sometimes it's just hard with the 30 second clip you have on MSNBC. And I'm like, yeah, but that's the game. But he's not being himself. If he was being himself, those 30 that's second clips probably would have hit harder. Because my whole thing is, if you know that people are craving something different, mm -hmm. if you can look and see in Give Iowa that more than half of Republicans in Iowa voted for you know, other Republicans. Why not give people something different? Give it to them. Give it to them. Like, why, why, go, why go down the whole Trump rabbit hole? And what I also told him, I was like, also too, man, I know what the polls are saying right now. And like, it's, it's a, it's a toss-up, which is scary. But Trump ain't really won shit since 2016. What does he win? What does he, he hasn't even helped nobody win nothing since 2016. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're saying that you don't really think there will be that much like fervor and excitement. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't see it. I think that you know when I see women leaving the Republican Party, that's a sign to me that Roe v. Wade, of course, to women is a big deal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I, I don't. I don't know. You know, the Democrats have a strategy which I think is kind of foolish, but it could be correct. Where they feel like the closer we get to an election, people are going to start paying more attention mm -hmm. and they're going to realize this is not what we want. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a you know strategy I would wait on. I feel like the rope are dope. You know. I mean, yeah. it feels like, all right, you're going to let him beat us up, yeah. but he's going to get tired. Yep. And do you, I, I don't know if that's a good strategy, but we'll see. Yeah. I feel like if Vivek runs again, he should run as a Democrat because I feel Democrats have no one that can capture or get us it'll excited be, about it. It'll be too hard to make people believe he's, exactly. he's turned over a new leaf with all the wild shit he's been saying. I mean, but a lot of the stuff that he's talking about, it's like, it can be on either party. The only thing is like slashing government probably, but. Slashing government is wild, which is crazy to me how people get so mad at folks who said defund the police. But, <laughs> but they they, but. they don't mind when Republicans say we want to slash government, we want to get rid of the FBI. And Alex not, brought that up too. Like, it, 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 the, the logic is like flawed. And then he brought it up too. And the other thing that he said, he did say one thing that I kind of, that I really agreed with. He said that, if you get a if you get a woman pregnant, <laughs> you should have to pay for the baby for 18 years and take care of the woman for 18 years. <laughs> that shit'll make some motherfuckers think twice. That's a little crazy. Why though? Why is that crazy? Why is it serious? Like, why is that crazy? <laughs> It'll make you be more responsible. That is yeah. true. It'll make you protect yourself. But why is it one-sided? Because Because we're carrying the child. Okay, but then after the baby is here, well, no, like, no, 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 no. Alice brought like, it down. But Alice said it's true. It's not one sided. He's just saying that it makes it equally responsible for both parties. It's just, now, it's now, just accountability. Yeah. Now both parties are accountable. Are you, you know really they, gonna bust off in that girl if you no, know but, you gotta take I mean, care of her for eighteen? years? Yeah, but taking care of the child for eighteen years, understandable. But taking care of a woman now, a woman could be like, oh shit, I want to get taken care of for eighteen years. Let me just go get knocked up by a rich they dude. I know, but if you make that a, a <laughs> law been law, doing this. <laughs> if you make that a law law, it is a law be, law. But nah, you don't child have support is child a law support, law. but not taking care of a woman. Yeah, that's but a little honestly, crazy. Though, I know so many women that try to put child support on the guy, but they can't find them, or, like, or they have scraps. Damn. Yeah, how many? How many women like this? Yeah. You what, know? Taylor? What did you just say? What type of women you hanging out? Yeah. How many, you know, so many women that are just getting nutted in by strangers that run away? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> many. I have been like one. I know. Exactly what you, you said. Just said you said Taylor, a lot. So you many. Said. You know That's so wild. many. You know I'm so a black many. female. I know how to dramatize. No, don't put that on black people. Do not put that on what black women. Yeah. Don't put that on black women. Run yeah, away. don't put that on black women, dude. We do. Letting these runaways shoot their club up. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are. First of all, yeah. if you let somebody, if you fuck somebody, it is what it is. Don't do, that. don't do that to black women, bro. Don't do that. I told you that the other day. What did I tell you the other day? What? I said, y'all, wow. Remember we was having that oh, conversation? Yeah. I'm like, yo, when you really think about some of the shit it's, that women be doing, it's, it's wild, can I, yo. Can I say something to that point? <laughs> yeah, like, that. for real. I don't what remember what we were talking about. Well, too. It is. Yo, okay. it sounds But like what I told you the other day, <laughs> sucking a dick, yo. That's the best. <laughs> Shut up. Don't say anything wrong <laughs> but, about that. But it's awesome. So and it's great. And you should sucking, keep doing it. No. Sucking random ones two yo, or three yo, times yo, a week. Yo, yo, yo. Comes out Child, you out the game, but don't mess exactly. it up for all the once single retire, dudes. That's I, I, exactly. Yeah. Once we retire now, every girl got to stop sucking dick. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Let me see your fingers, man. I'm about to say. 
<laughs> fuck? I'm saying once we retire, now oh, all these girls. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you said it like once we retire, like we still in the game. Oh, no, no, yeah, we're yeah, out of yeah, the yeah, game. Yeah, we're yeah, very yeah, retired. Yeah, yeah. Now, you should be too, Alex. I am. I'm saying for the single guys out there. Oh, no, I'm you still got to look out nah, for nah. them. You say yeah. fuck them. Nah. But what I'm trying to say is Taylor was just describing <laughs> how fast black women are, and I wonder if you want to keep that same that. energy. I didn't fucking say that. You just said you didn't buy a runaway. That doesn't mean that they're First of all, first of all, I didn't say that they're... Just fucking just random guy. They didn't say that. They got to be random if they don't they, know where they're, they're at. They're not random. How can you not be random if you don't know where they live, where they at, anything? Because they just they're ran bums. Away? There's so many. There's so, so, so you make many. a bum take long to fuck? Damn. You're not getting what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I'm not. You're not. All I'm saying I, I, is. You're kind of wilding women, right now, Taylor. You women, are women get into, why are you taping me? <laughs> He's I'm not, not taping you. What the? F- why are you so bad? How you holding the phone up? That was like crazy. a human. That was no. crazy. See, like, see how it's leaning right there. You just literally crazy. like this. No, don't get off this. Don't get off this. Okay. You were describing how fast is, black I'm, women are. No, that you I know. didn't. No, you I'm said saying the girls that you know are fast as fucking get nutted in my brother. They can't find their guys. That. That's what you said. I literally didn't say can't that. find That's exactly what you said. She said a lot. She said she knows a lot. She said literally, you know a lot of women. They can't find the guys. Filled up. By random dudes that then disappear. That's exactly what you said. Vamoose. Abracadabra. See you later. You said that. Why do you hate Let yourself? Let me clarify. <laughs> Why do you hate black y'all? women? Why your Let friends me clarify. Get in like First that? of all, did I say anything about my friends? Yes. I said, I know, you literally said Me your saying friends. I know women doesn't mean that they're my friends. How do you know them? From what do you know them? Are they your enemies? <laughs> they could be associates. So anyway, <laughs> all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, can these, you be a godfather? All I'm saying is that can you be a godmother? Women, I'm not saying that these women when the child has are a just ghost dad? fucking. Stop! I'm not saying that these women are just fucking these random guys. Holy ghost! <laughs> Y'all ain't annoying. Ghost dad, you got. You say all your friends got ghost. I didn't say any of that. <laughs> <laughs> you talking to? You I didn't say any of that. How do you say that to your? I didn't say any of that. I didn't say any of that. What do ghost dads call their girlfriends? Booze. Booze. <laughs> 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 oh, Taylor, what's wrong? Taylor? Can I clarify what I was about to say though? What? Huh? All I'm saying is that they're not fucking random guys, but there's plenty of women in the world that have slept with guys, dated them, and then when it comes to them stepping up to be a be dad, dad, they're not around. They're not around. But those girls, but some they got chlamydia, said. they got stuff this, they got all these different things that they're dealing with on a regular basis, and that's the problem. That's different than what you said, though, Taylor. <laughs> what you said was, you know, mad girls who be sleeping with homeless dudes and then they can't ever find the dudes' houses and send them address, send them, send them paperwork and they don't have no house. That's what you said. Full-on gonorrhea. Do we have any- Stuff this. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> Do we have any more ads? Yes. Come on, let's read some ads, Taylor. Yes. Then we got to do some let's asking idiots. Let's do some idiots. Let's do some ads and some asking idiots. Get you out of here, Taylor. Oh, <laughs> get me out of here, I'm saving y'all. you. Yeah. Get you out of here, yo. I'm we trying do. to get you out of here. You're going crazy. You got to go home. You're going crazy. I mean, right. you've just been rant, screaming random shit. You really shit. have been. It's Damn. crazy. Like, for no reason. <laughs> for no reason. Why are we even talking about anal? You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? No, nah, no. Nah, you, you have been a little bit crazy today. <laughs> fuck runaways <right> wrong. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> I cannot stand y'all, yo. All right, guys, we're gonna take a break for a second. Y'all need to know about a new sneaker that's literally changing the game, okay? Let's say you're navigating the city during rush hour. The Vessies. Vessies are the trusted companion of anybody who's got their head on their shoulders. Their waterproof technology and comfortable fit make every commute a breeze, especially on those rainy days or snow days where the slush piles up around the city. It's that time of year, but Vessi has you covered. They ensure dry and comfortable feet no matter the weather. I know you're sick of getting to work and your feet are soaked, your socks are soaked, the rest of the day is miserable. You got fungus under one of your toenails. They're probably gonna have to remove your foot at the ankle because you don't have Vessi's. Vessi has amazing shoes to keep you prepared for any weather. Definitely check out their Storm Burst Boots. It's a winter essential. Their robust build keeps your feet warm and dry and even in the coldest, wettest conditions. Okay, right here. They're ready for any weather. 
Okay, the Dymatex technology in Vessi shoes means I'm always ready for unexpected weather shifts, rain or shine. They got me covered. Sustainable choices, very important. Choosing Vessi means choosing sustainability. Their eco-friendly manufacturing aligns with the environmental values that you should be holding. And they got the everyday functionality. Vessis aren't just shoes. They're a lifestyle enabler. From work to play, they keep up with the busy schedule that we got without missing a beat and also customize comfort, okay? The removal insoles in the Vessi shoes, they allow us to have that personalized comfort. They adapt to my feet's knees, ensuring maximum support. So if you're like us and you wanna be ready for any rain or shine, anything at all, head to Vessi.com slash idiots to get 15% off your entire purchase. By the way, free shipping to Canada, the United States, Australia, Japan, Taiwan, Korea, Singapore. I'm pretty sure I got all those countries right. I believe that I did, but they could check for us. That is V-E-S-S-I dot com slash idiots to get 15% off your entire purchase. Now let's get back to the show. Let's do some asking idiots, Taylor Gang. What we got, Taylor Gang, Taylor Gang. Gang, gang. Gang, gang, Taylor Gang, 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 gang Taylor. Gang, gang. Might be a sailor. Sailor, uh, her name is Taylor. Uh, Taylor, don't ever fail a fail a, uh, Oh, might mail a mail a, uh, Oh, black mail a mail a, Ooh. Black male a male cuz I got her on record saying some really wild shit. Oh, I got her <laughs> yeah. on record saying some very, really wild shit. Me too. I know you Back do. Back to you. I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Uh, the Ashley Ali says if Andrew went on a joint comedy tour, who would it be with and why? Oh, wow. Ooh. You about to do that? No. Wow. But, uh, ooh, that's a good one. I mean, God, there's so many people that you just want to be on tour with. It would be amazing. What would even be the point if you're already doing arenas by yourself? That's the thing. It's But, you know, sometimes it's fun to, like, do things collectively. You know, just be around other people who are inspiring and, and also, like, put together that show. Mm -hmm. What do you say? What are you laughing at over there? I'm just laughing at how people talk to us, man. Wow. Because it's like, he don't mean no harm. But it's really funny. The it's next hilarious. Time. It's, like, it's really funny. Like, man, the Doc Flex. So you don't have nobody. No, no, absolutely. Oh. I mean, there's some kind of like, look, obviously, Lil Duval, I love, you know oh, what I mean? That'd be fantastic. Dude, Cat Williams right now, Chris Rock, Kevin Hart, um, Shane Gillis, hilarious. Theo Vaughn, hilarious. Uh, still good at stand -up? Rogan. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rogan also, like, it'd be awesome to go do a tour, just all of us. Like, there's so many guys, Santino, Bobby Lee. Like, there's just a lot of guys I think that we'd, we'd have a great energy to bring on it. Obviously, the Flagrant Boys, I already tour with them. Oh, that'll be fantastic. But, but yeah, Akash and Rogan, uh, Mark Theo, Ro Shane Gillis. The yeah, it'd Magatol. be crazy. The Make America giggle again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Manta.flex <laughs> says, oh, you want to read this one? Go ahead. Yeah. Y'all, <laughs> Manson Dot Flex says, y'all N words ready for when Jesus comes, but he spelled it out. What did he spell? The N word. What is that? Man, I'm gonna tell you something, Manson. Jesus ain't coming back. Why would he? You know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus is ignoring us, and rightfully so. We are the experiment that did not work. And by the way, we're not even the first experiment that they put here on this planet, <laughs> all right? They're they going to keep putting more recipes out until they you get one that works. works, all right? They up there arguing right now. I'm telling you, it was better when it was T-Rexes and Brontosaurus. <laughs> 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 all right? Fucking These shit humans up. fucking shit up. You see what they're doing to your earth? You, you Remember how beautiful this artwork was? Imagine you had the most pristine house ever showed. Yeah. I mean, you built it from the ground up. It had it everything you could possibly want. Everything. We're human beings. Do you realize if there was no such thing as capitalism or consumerism, we still would be fine? Mm -hmm. We'd have wa fresh water to drink. We'd have fruits to eat. You know what I mean? Vegetables to eat. We have animals to eat. God literally gave us everything we needed, and we found a way to fuck it up. That's true. Because Puerto Ricans want to wear Nike tracksuits. That's fact. What? It really is their fault. It really is their fault. You know what I mean? I agree with you on that. <laughs> Dude, what the I fuck? I do agree with you on that. It's come Puerto on, Rican. man. It's really these fucking come Puerto on, Ricans man. and their Nike tracksuits. Come on, man. Why would you come back if you were Jesus? 
Taylor, if you don't bring up another goddamn question, <laughs> why would you come back if you was Jesus? Nah, I know. You know what I'm saying? Uh, By the way, you got Book have of faith. Clarence. You seen Book of Clarence? Nah, not yet. Fantastic film. Mm. Can you I saw check Book it? of Clarence? Nah, what is it? Fantastic film. It's a book about uh it just basically touches on all of the people who thought they were Jesus, basically. Like all because you know, in the Bible it talks about all the Messiah like figures, all these people who would come and say they were Jesus. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's just a very interesting take on how things possibly, probably were, you know, uh, back back in those days. Did they touch on comedy though? <clears throat> yeah, it's a comedy. It's a, if you've ever seen. Um... Did they touch on give it us? <laughs> he can't. <laughs> God, here, man. Who do you think God, God is, man? This guy here. Who do you think God is? This guy here. Who do you think God is, man? This guy here. Who do you think God is, man? Yeah. Oh I can't God. remember the name of the movie, but it's kind of like that movie. It's a comedy, but it's, it's, a, it's a good film. Uh... <laughs> what? 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 Look at why are people so crazy. Brandon is listening to the insane. Scroll up, Taylor. No, up, up, up. Siege1526 said, if 50 offered y'all a role and y'all had to be a twerking crackhead in power, would you do it? <laughs> I, gotta have, I need more. Like, why would I just be a twerking yeah, crackhead? Yeah, we need more, man. <laughs> you know Fifth, we need more. <laughs> like, that can't be the role. Can't, like, gotta be more, Fifth. I mean, Kendrick Lamar played a crackhead in power. Not a twerking I know, crackhead, not twerking. though. Twerking is crazy. And he's saying twerking to y'all because y'all a little... A what little we, what? what? <laughs> We well, a little fucking little, yeah. Don't y'all not say pause, y'all keep it going, so. What does that mean? Oh, she said you sweet. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> she called you sassy. Hey, nah, Yo. Taylor said y'all sweet. She called you a sassy, sassy. <laughs> y'all just like Clinton. What, Clint, Clinton, what is Clinton? Yeah, she called you sweet dick, nigga. Are we sweet dick? Are we sweet dick? What is the last word? Sweet dick Willie. Yeah. Are we William sweet, Clint. Yeah. Damn, Taylor. Sweet dick. That's uh, great. Scroll up, Taylor. Yeah, I don't want to answer the question. The answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> Without more information, I need more information. <laughs> uh, Primo Supremo 21 says, how do I reach financial security? Easy. Uh, appreciating what you currently have now. Whoa. You know what I'm saying financial security is uh -huh. not necessarily a number. I know people that you know, are making $50,000 a year. They down in the Carolinas. They got a roof over their head. They keep some food, uh, you know, on, on, on their table. Mm. They're able to take their child to daycare and pay for the child care services. And guess what? They are happy. Mm. So, you know, financial security, financial security is on you. You know, what makes you, what makes you feel secure? You know, I can tell you one thing that will make you feel secure, not... Well, living below your means will make you feel financially Absolutely. secure. Absolutely. Live below your means, man. I live below my means. Straight Thanks. up. If you got 500, act like you got... Three. Act like you got 100. Because mm -hmm. technically, if you got 500, you really only got 250 anyway. Yeah, Because <laughs> of taxes. Government. So act like you got 100. That's all. Uh, it's Electric says, how do you guys deal with friends who seem to act brand new? Sound like you hating, my boy. Hmm. <laughs> Sound like you hating my boy. Mm. Well, how is he acting brand new? Why, exactly. Why is it? That's why I said. Sound like you hating my boy. Sound like somebody came up in life. Uh oh. You hating my boy. But well, why uh -oh. can't be the other way around? Well, if he came up and his friends are acting weird towards him. Hmm. Okay, that works too. Now that happens. That's, ah. that's true. That's the smartest thing you've ever said, Taylor. That was fuck really fucking you. smart. Why'd you say? What? What'd I say? Compliment. Why'd you say fuck you to you? You just the gave her a compliment. Thing I ever said. I didn't What's say the smartest that? thing you ever said that all your friends get nutted in and the guys <laughs> run out the door and never to be seen again? I didn't say that. I didn't, I didn't even say that. What do you? I never said that, Taylor. Y'all gonna continue? <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys deal with friends who seem to act brand new? <laughs> yeah, it just it, it could be either way. It could either be you, you hating on your friends or your friends could be hating on you. But I don't have time for the uh, you know the the flaky shit. Like, mm -hmm. We are gonna have a conversation about it. If it's nothing, it's nothing. If it's something, if we really love each other, we'll figure it address out. Address it. That's it. Address it. Let's do two more, man. What we got? Let's get some good ones. These were good ones, but let's get some. Oh. Ooh, now this is a good one. We might can end on this one. Alex Boss 34 says, what are the limits of being mindful of others' opinions versus not caring what others think? Hmm. Mindful of others' opinions versus not caring what others think. Being mindful of others' opinions versus not caring. I think if you're creating what you want and you're proud of the thing you're creating and it's not hurting people, then 
what they think is not important to you. If you're truly creating the things that you want. I think when you're not creating the things you want and you're maybe just chasing success a little bit, which is okay too, uh, because success might get you to a point where you could create what you want, then what other people think is it actually is more valuable to you because that's actually what you're looking for. You're looking for their approval instead of like your own artistic approval. Hmm. Uh, Yeah. I think when it comes to the uh, opinions of others, I think we all know when it's constructive criticism and when it's some bullshit. Because my, my, my initial thought was, I only care about the opinions of people whose opinions I care about. Mm. So you know what I mean? So it's, it's not even just friends and family. If I care about your opinion, mm. I'm going to come to you yeah. and ask you what your opinion is because I genuinely value your opinion. There's something about you that I've heard, that I've seen, that I've witnessed for myself where I'm like, you know what? I care about what this person thinks of this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And most of the time, the things that I'm asking about is something external. Because when it comes to internal things, what I think what Andrew said is spot on. Like, if you're doing things that come from here, it don't even matter what anybody thinks because you're you're doing it because you want to do it. Yeah, the external validation isn't as important to you. So you just naturally won't care as much what they think because you're satisfied by the art. Yeah, and sometimes I'm just getting a reaction. I might let you see some shit, hear some shit, and the reaction you give me is enough for me. Or you might give me some good feedback, and I'm like, oh, Oh, would be a dope tweet. You know what I mean? Um, Not caring what others think, I think you have to have that more so than ever nowadays because... Because you're going to hear a lot about what other people... Yep. Between social media and YouTube and all of that other shit, you're going to hear a lot of opinions Mm -hmm. that you don't give a fuck about and you shouldn't give a fuck about because most of these people don't know you. And what I've been realized is these people don't know what the fuck they talking about. That's it, it, guys. My man. All right, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But... If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiot Podcast. Thank you for listening.